ECM, PCM, VCM, TCM, TCC, BCM, MAF, MAP, IAT, TPS, ECT, VSS, CAGS, AFM, DOD, EGR, DEFCO, DCT, VATS, PATS, COT, WATT, PE, STFT, LTFT. Hey guys, it's Brett McClellan here with the Tuning School, and today I'm going to be teaching you the common terms you're going to hear while tuning. Today we're going to go over a little bit of the terms that you're going to hear when you're tuning. Things like ECM, PCM, VCM, the MAF, the MAP, stuff like that. Uh, it's, sometimes it's confusing for the new guys who don't really know what they mean. So a pretty common one that can get pretty confusing is ECM, PCM, and VCM. Now that's the same name for the same thing, just from different manufacturers. ECM is engine control module, PCM is powertrain control module, and then VCM is vehicle control module. Now, all of that is the engine computer. It's the thing that we're actually tuning most of the time. So it's just the manufacturer's different way of calling it different things. Now, after that, they have a pretty much a universal one, which is TCM, which is a transmission control module. Uh, pretty much all the manufacturers use that name, and it's the computer that controls the transmission. And then you have the BCM, which is the body control module. Uh, and that controls like the windows and the radio, the radio and the fan, like the air conditioning and stuff like that. Um, and then you have another one is the TCC, which is torque converter control. And now that's not actually a module, but it's a system inside the computer itself. But it sounds a lot like the module, so it can get a little confusing. So TCC is torque converter control. All right, so now we're going to go over a few of the sensors that you're going to be dealing with when you're tuning. One is the MAP sensor. That's manifold absolute pressure. Now that measures the, in the atmospheric pressure that's inside your intake manifold. So if you're at wide open throttle, you're at 100 kPa, which is atmosphere. If you're at a vacuum, you're at uh, somewhere below 100 kPa. And if you have a boosted application, you're somewhere above 100 kPa, depending on how much boost you're running. Then there's the mass airflow sensor, the MAF. The MAF measures the air that's actually being drawn into the engine. So it's measuring how much air is actually being sucked into the engine. Then there's the IAT, which is the intake air temperature sensor. And that is pretty self-explanatory. It's just measuring the temperature of the air that's being uh, drawn into the engine. Then there's the TPS sensor, which is the throttle position sensor. That's measuring how far the gap, how much you're depressing the gas pedal and how much to open the throttle blade to let air in. Then there's the ECT, which is engine coolant temperature. Again, pretty self-explanatory, just measuring the temperature of the engine coolant. Then there's the VSS, which is the vehicle speed sensor. That's just measuring how fast you're actually moving. So now we're going to go over a little bit of emission stuff. There's the CAGS, which is computer automated gear selection. Now, on the GM cars, what that does is when you're trying to shift the car at low or medium speeds, it forces you to go from first gear to fourth gear. It won't allow you to get into second or third, and it just kind of helps make the car more efficient, but it's really lousy to drive that way. Then there's the AFM, which is active fuel management. Uh, that's basically where the car run runs on less cylinders than it actually has. So if you have a V8, maybe you run on four cylinders. If you have a V6, maybe you run on three. Then there's the DOD, which is displacement on demand, and it's the same principle. The car is running on less cylinders than it actually has. It helps build efficiency. It only do uses the AFM and the DOD in low load situations, so if you're at a stoplight, it uses it. Um, then there is the EGR, which that's pretty common. Most guys know what that is. That's exhaust gas recirculation. That is so they can take some of the exhaust gas and actually circulate it back into the intake manifold. It helps make the car more efficient, pass some emission standards. Then there's the DEFCO, which is deceleration fuel cutoff. That's when, when you're decelerating, it cuts most, if not all, of the fuel out of the engine, again, for efficiency's sake. Now, something you're also going to run across is something called DTCs. What that is is uh, diagnostic trouble codes. Those are like the P015 codes or the P128 codes or things like that. That's what makes your check engine light come on. Uh, in addition to those, you have the VATS, which is Vehicle Anti-Theft System. That's GM's anti-theft system. Uh, that happens when a lot of times in swapped vehicles, uh, when you're putting a different engine into an older car, and it, it's known to cause uh, no-start no situations. 
Then you have the PATS, which is Ford's version of the same anti-theft system. It's called Passive Anti-Theft System, or PATS. Um, again, it can cause no-start situations. Now we're going to go over some fueling terms, and there is a, a good bit of these. One is cat over temp protection, or COT. That is when the car is at wide open throttle and it adds more fuel to help cool down the catalytic system. Then there's a uh, watt, which is wide open throttle. That is when your, your foot is completely depressed the gas pedal and the engine is running at 100 kPa. Then there is PE, that stands for power enrichment. That's when the computer adds more fuel while you're at wide open throttle to help get ideal combustion. Then there's STFT, that's short-term fuel trims. That's a percentage of how far off your fueling is versus what the computer, the computer is commanding. Then there's LTFT, those are long-term fuel trims. That's an average number of how much the short terms are having to correct over a long period of time. Then there's EQ ratio, which is equivalency ratio. It's just a fueling term for how much fuel has to be added at wide open throttle versus a part throttle and idle. Then there's uh, IPW, which is injector pulse width, that's the amount of time that the injectors are open and spraying. Then there's IDC, which is injector duty cycle, which is how long the injectors actually have to spray given a combustion cycle. I hope this video is educational for you and that you've learned something. If you have any questions about anything we've talked about here today, then feel free to call us here at the Tuning School at 727-264-8875.